Hello everyone, my name is Hasham. I'm the owner of Clemson Aeronautics, where we make the riveting and dimpling systems. A couple of days ago, I got on Vans Air Force to research something about a part, the orientation of a, a part. And uh, one gentleman had made a comment on the thread to be careful with that. It is mounted this way, not this way. And he made the mistake of uh, mounting it the wrong way. Now he had to drill all the rivets out and telling us to be really careful and everything. And uh, so a couple of other uh, gentlemen comes in and make remarks uh, that was totally out of place. I made him feel guilty for saying that and he had to say something like, well, all I was doing is trying to help other people not to do the same mistake that I had done. So, which make me want to help in any way I can. And this is one of the important things that I'm trying to do with these videos, is to help people that's uh, starting uh, to build a certain part of the airplane they get a heads up on what they are getting into then they refer to their manuals to make sure that this is the correct way then build their airplane so i'm gonna change a little bit the way i do these uh videos i, I hope that would benefit somebody out there if you are starting on your horizontal stabilizer it might be a good idea to look at this page 8-12 that have the whole thing in one print and note the orientation of this drawing this is aft left and top so you can see the different parts and where they are located before you start so you can have a mental picture of uh, what you are doing to start, um, I think it would be a, a good idea to see the layout for the front spar as it is in the uh, in the manual, and the way it's pictured in the manual is this way. This notch is in the bottom, and if we look at the manual, this notch in the manual is in the bottom this uh, this page does not have orientation errors so you need to be careful this is the back of the airplane here this way i am looking forward okay so this is forward and this is aft this notch is on the bottom now that we know the orientation we can do our work and mentally know where everything is now the doubler you have to be careful with the doubler once you match uh, drill it or final drill it because there is both uh, <coughs> I will tell you how you can uh, verify uh, top and bottom these three holes here are with an angle that is pointed this way there is another three on the other side that's pointing the other side those three and um, those weren't there in the doubler itself so you, you had to actually match drill those so once you put the doubler click on it and do the match drilling and final drilling you need to know the orientation why would this three holes being slanted that way because you can have it this way and not know it 
and then your final drilling is not going to match. So you, you have to mark it. I marked it with the notch in the bottom and pointing forward and forward is this way. Okay? So final drilling and match drilling the doubler you have to mark it well and there is two counter sink holes right here because this part goes in here so if there is a rivet sticking out it won't lay flat so the way I did it is I actually put the clicos on those holes that I have marked in blue of course you can put them in any holes do your final drilling and match drilling and all that stuff but I marked those so I don't have to go in there and, and drill again in a, in a hole that I already final drilled so now I know these are the ones that I have to final drill when I remove the Clecos. Uh, the other thing, um, I marked my hinges. One, two, three, four, and so on. Um, it is, um, this is the first one, second one, third, fourth, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. But it's not important on here because I know the orientation on the spar itself. But I could mix these up. So I mark these. And I'm not going to scuff these. So I won't lose orientation on those parts. But this is important so we can put it back in the same spot after we do the match drilling and after painting with the um, primer and so forth. Uh, now that I pointed out how parts are oriented as far as the front spar and the doubler and so forth is concerned, the only thing left in that area is this thing. And I made it be careful when you match drill it and take it apart, don't uh, <laughs> miss where uh, your markings on it. And when you rivet it, bolt it down to something before you start riveting using the four holes on the hinges. So you have it bolted down. I had bolted down in a, in a wooden block. Then I started riveting. It will come out uh, um, better that way. Uh, now, I already <laughs> took the video clips a few days ago when I was working on that so I'm gonna gather all the video clips uh, and put it at the end of this video at uh, a higher speed you might not want to watch that but at least you get a head start about how the front spar is put together and what you have to do for it so uh, thank you very much and I hope you enjoy our video and I hope it helps and we'll see you next time. And we're here visiting Mr. Eric Barnhill, our IA, the gentleman that helped me put the rudder together the other day. Say hello, Mr. Barnhill. Hi. <laughs> and we, the reason we're here is to straighten out these two pieces on Mr. Barnhill's roller here. So Eric have a house on the uh, private airstrip paved runway and everything and it is located right next to Clemson Airport it's called Eagle Ridge I think 
much straighter than it was now. Thank you, Mr. Barnhill. That's be fifty dollars. That's it? Fifty dollars? Well, this is like a two million dollar airplane, so I guess fifty dollars is very cheap. In preparation for the horizontal stabilizer, I got some hardware out to um, in preparation for that, just to collect it. And those four bolts are the smallest of the bolts in that particular bag, which is 30-30-2, uh, I believe. So um, I got those out, the washers and the self-locking nut and the hinge brackets and the what we call it is inboard hinge bracket with the bearing in the middle there flange bearing so um, anyhow we got these out and I put them usually in my Bojangle cup and uh, in preparation for when we need them. Uh, I also got some parts out yesterday and started out uh, the front spar, the rear spar, and the stringers, and uh, we got some of the uh, ribs out. And I believe this is in the skin too, so I believe this is pretty much just about everything we need. Here's the doublers too. And I, yesterday I spent a little bit of time deburring all of these guys right here. And uh, so all was left is to deburr the smaller holes. So lightning holes are already deburred too. So, so we can go ahead and start on page two.
to sum up what I just done, I done what's on a, page uh, 8-2, uh, match drilling uh, the doubler and file drilling like four holes and countersinking a couple of holes and stuff like that. And um, it's time I took everything apart and uh, also uh, final drilled the holes in in these the hinge brackets to a number 12 I'm, I do it with my reamer so um, it's time to deburr everything then it's saying to go ahead and rivet well I can't rivet till I uh, prime everything so I'm not gonna be able to do that till I finish priming so I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, deburring then we'll do some priming <laughs> 